we live? Quinton, how are you, man? Welcome. And this is the first official play testy live stream thingy. So um, I've got Pedal Star Galactica hooked up right now. I'm just going to pause this live video over here. And I'm going to pop out my comments so I can see what's going on. Just bear with me one sec. We should be good. All right, here we go, awesome. Merry Christmas, cool, thanks guys, appreciate that. Schofield, how are you man? Imagery Arts. <laughs> uh, Dave, Jamal, Jamal, you weren't first man, what's going on? I think Quentin beat you. No, 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 I'm just kidding. Welcome guys. Streaming thing sucks. Why is it that the test worked and now I've got a problem with my network? <laughs> let's uh, let's have a quick play here. Always the way. Always the way. I'll quickly just make a tweak. It should fix it. Oh yeah, okay. It's weird. It's a weird thing. All right, we should be good. All right, so uh, yeah, we've got Pedal Star Galactica. It is back on the floor. As you can see, it weighs, this thing is heavy. It weighs about as much as most amps. <laughs> David says, uh, my son is gonna buy me a PRS this year if I quit smoking. It sounds like a fair trade. Absolutely. Uh, Derek Down Under from Western Australia. How are you, man? Love the Les Paul, thanks man. This is uh, my uh, Tokai Love Rock. So it's a Japanese Les Paul style guitar at about a third of the price. <laughs> All right, so this is the first, li oh, first live stream for Brandon. Welcome man, appreciate that. Uh, lots of guys here already, which is awesome. So hopefully the sound is good. We did a quick five minute test yesterday. Uh, I took that stream down. It was only five minutes just to make sure things were working. <laughs> So right now I've got the green rhino pedal on, so... And the aquapus. So I thought we might be able to uh, stack a few pedals together, see what uh, different sounds we can get, and go through everything that this massive, massive board has. This is my friend's pedal board, this isn't mine. These are basically uh, shop demo boards, which, uh, yeah, you, you don't normally buy. These are just demonstration boards. All right. Yep, lots of people are answering that delay question correctly. <laughs> um, great to see the Tokai back. Yeah, I haven't used it just, well, the thing is I, I usually mix up the guitars I use on each set of videos I get from companies, so I'll tend to pick two and then just use those for the most of them, and then when I get more stuff come in, I tend to switch it up. So I, I definitely haven't used this for a while. Let's go fuzz. Now we do have two wire pedals on this board as well. We've got a GCB95 and this one, I'm not actually sure what model it is, but it's got a whole lot of toggle switches. It's also got a pot on the side as well. It sort of changes up the voicing. So um, we, we'll definitely get into that as well. Scott, thanks man, I appreciate that. Happy holidays to you too. How do you fix the pedals on this board? Screws, yeah, so basically, it's probably, oh, you can see it on the video. So on this camera, you can see like, there's lots of little dots on the on the board, so they take the back plates off, and then just screw the screws through the the, the holes basically with the back plate underneath the board. So um, there's a couple of really good power supplies built into this thing as well. Uh, this is a Dunlop board, uh, MXR, all owned by the same company. So um, yeah, you basically got we've got an overdrive here. I might go through them anyway and show you what it what it's got. Uh, there's some pretty cool stuff. 
So we've got the GTOD, which is basically a tube screamer. Nothing new there, hey? Then we've got the Berserker Overdrive. Do they sound any different? No, because I dialed them in for the sound that I like. Well, they sound a little bit different, but they're essentially, you know. This one does, this sounds completely dif different. This is the uh, 78 Distortion. It also has this uh, crunch button as well. I kind of like that one, I reckon that sounds pretty good. And then we've got the uh, Green Rhino, which is a bit of a, an anomaly. This thing I've tried before, and I didn't really realize how actually good it was. Let's try that. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Then we've got the Swollen Pickle Fuzz. It's actually a pretty good fuzz. I don't like fuzz pedals much, if at all. I don't use them for what I play, but it's actually not too bad. Um, let me just open this chat up a little bigger here so I can see what's going on. All right, Brandon says, I'm on my way to make a trade for an Epiphone Nighthawk. What are your thoughts on them? They, they're different. They're definitely a different guitar. Visually, I haven't played a lefty that I've never seen one. So uh, Scott asks, uh, what are my thoughts on Eric Gales? He's a fantastic player, probably one of the best. Um, I bought a CT... Oh, oh you bought a, a Crazy Tube Circuit Stardust. Awesome, man. Yeah, oh, fantastic. They're, they're great pedals. Um, what was the other question here? I can't... Oh, I must have missed it. There was another question I wanted to get to, but I, I might have missed it. So feel free to ask again. Sorry, guys. Um, I've got a couple of guitars out today, too. I've got three, actually. So I've got this. I've got my Telecaster behind me, which is over here. And I've got my PRS SE, which is just on the other side, which is kind of behind this. Um, it's my sort of outer shot. Oh, you can kind of see it, there it is. So if you, um, we can pick which guitar to use and we can go through this stuff. So the rest of the pedals that are on here, I'll leave the green Rhino on. We've got the Aquapus, which I used to love this thing. But you know what? I've played so many more better delay pedals than it lately that it's good still, but I think the MXR carbon copy kills it. So what did I get for Christmas? I ended up, uh, I got these headphones from my mum and my brother. So uh, these are audio technical ones, which are pretty sweet for doing what I'm doing. So I thought that would be I wanted a set of wired headphones, so um, yeah, it's a it's a pretty cool solution for that. I didn't buy myself like any guitar gear or anything like that. What I did get was uh, a hard drive because <laughs> I I go through hard drive space like nobody's business. And um, <clears throat> geez, my throat's gone funny. Sorry. And uh, the kind of guitar gift for myself was was the PRS basically. So uh, that was a a couple of weeks ago now, maybe three weeks ago. All right. Hey Shane, I can listen while I play Warcraft. Is pe are people still playing Warcraft? I know it was the biggest online game ever, but it's been out forever. Thank you. 
I think it sounds pretty quiet through the headphones, minus some of the dirt pedals I got cranking on right now, but um, in terms of audio quality, it should be hopefully pretty good. <clears throat> All right, would, would you play the tally with the LPD pedal? I like to hear that combination. Uh, yeah, LPD, which one do you, are you talking about? Sorry, the, um, I don't know what you mean by that, sorry. Actually, have I not, no, I'm not too sure what you mean. Um, any experience with analog alien pedals? Now that's, um, a company I've just not, I've just not ever heard of actually. What guitar do you most wish they made in a lefty? Um, you can pretty much get everything that I like in a, in a lefty at the moment. There's not a whole lot left that isn't uh, isn't already made. So I mean the uh, PRSSE was kind of like the one that I thought everyone should agree that they needed one, and they they finally made one. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's just probably just more of a range of tele Telecasters, Strats, and uh, Gibson are kind of getting there now again, thankfully. But a Flying V would definitely be part of the... I know you, you can get some in different brands and all that, but uh, a good range of Flying Vs would be awesome. So yeah, there's always the same the same sort of guitars everywhere, you know, just the just limited range, limited color, change the colors up, mix things up. There's only so much, like if Fender aren't selling many lefties, it's because everyone already owns like a bog standard Mexican Tally or Strat, if you're a lefty, on the most part. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Kevin says, I've got carpal tunnel thing going on. Ever dealt with that? No, I haven't. I've had some friends that have had surgery with it. Um, but yeah, I'll get Dr. Rick on a on a live stream and maybe he can help you. But uh, nah, nah, look, I don't know, man. I I, I know it's not good, so uh, that sucks. I feel sorry for you. That Yeah, you won't be able to play. Most people end up having to have like a surgery on that, I think. These pedals definitely work really well. This Zach Wild one or whatever the dude's name is. Um, stacking it into other stuff makes it sound way better. On its own, it just sort of... It's a very low output sort of pedal. I don't, I don't really get it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that one. I, I don't really dig it. Yeah. But in terms of the, the actual delays, I like the MXR carbon copy a whole lot more. It's probably way more versatile than the Aquapus. Um, is that the Zach Wild? Yeah, this one. Yeah, so we've got a couple of, I think that, I don't know if that's part of that series. I think it is. That's a chorus pedal. We've got a uh, metal pedal over here as well, which is the best pedal on the, on the board by a mile. It's awesome. Um, we've got, uh, yeah, this one's a Zach Wild one. It's just a, one of his overdrive. I don't know, I, I just think it's a little bit lackluster. That's the MXR. Sorry, I had them both on. And that's the Zach Wild one. I, I just don't get it. It's like they basically just made the same pedal in two different boxes. 
I'm not too sure what the difference is. Less output and more compression maybe. Ah, oh, yeah, there is a difference. Just not a lot. Yeah, it's a bit of a tighter sound, but I don't know, man. Uh, Earth Skills says he just got a Maxon OD808. That's awesome. Sounds like a MOSFET or JFET pedal. It's viciously cold in Canada. Yeah, I bet. I'm gonna go for a swim later today. I'm already starting to sweat. So it's gonna be uh, 33 degrees Celsius here today. So uh, yeah, I'll get jump in the water later. <laughs> I don't know how people live in those climates. I got no idea. I, I couldn't, I, not, not my sort of thing. I mean, it gets cold, excuse me, it gets cold where I live, but not like that. I just couldn't deal with that. I was in Boston in November several years ago and it, it snowed and it was so cold. It was minus five degrees Celsius or three. And that was way cold enough for me. What do I think from these brands? Rock Fabric Effects, KMA Audio, Orient. Look, it just depends what you really want on your board and what you need and what you like the sound of. I mean, brands don't necessarily mean good tone or bad tone. Just find the stuff you like the sound of and irrespective of the brands. Uh, Rock Fabric Effects is the only one that I've really tested on that list and they make awesome stuff. Um, but yeah, trust your ear. Don't really just buy stuff based on the brand. Just buy it because it sounds good. Uh, and that you like it, not because I like it or someone else likes it. Oh, Zach would be playing through a dirty air. Well, that might explain that. Yeah, it's just a, it's a very lackluster sounding. Yeah, it's all right. It's just, I don't know. So that's a GC by GCB95F. Let's turn on the, the green rhino. So this has got some trim pots and stuff on it. Oh yeah, we got, oh, this is the one with the different modes. Oh, here we go. Ah, oh, yeah, all right, let's try another one. So it sort of takes off the high-end splatter that's kind of cool so there's a couple of pedals like this out on the market actually with all these different modes from different companies but uh, I'm tipping that this guy was Dunlop might have had the uh, been the innovator there because they've been doing it for a while but um, yeah very cool it's a red button down here too I have no idea what it does let's try it out does nothing. Alright, just take those fake pedals and strip off the paint and rename them to whatever you want uh, or let us name them. I actually gave a couple away to a friend of mine. I just, yeah, there's a few left uh, somewhere, but uh, yeah, I gave a few away already. Uh, minus uh, four degrees, wow. Yeah, that's crazy, man. That's... <laughs> There we go, so we've got a whole lot of effects on. Actually feels a bit... Whoa, all right. Sorry, sorry guys, I'm just blowing everybody's ears out. I gotta get used to this setup. It's the first time I've used it, so. Uh... 
Ray, welcome to the live stream, man. Thanks. I'm guessing after the new Big Muff op amp reissue that has just come out, I find it hard. I find it hard to cut live with the original Big Muff. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I'm not big into fuzz pedals, uh, unless you um, maybe find one that's got some sort of EQ curve on it. Maybe that'll help you in the mix. Uh, certain frequencies don't work well if a pedal's really bass heavy. They don't generally sound that good going live or in a live mix that you don't need a lot of that low end. And the Big Muff is a big, full sound, so you may need to sort of tweak it a bit. Maybe try an EQ pedal or something. Um, yeah. The red button is a 10 dB boost. Ah, okay, cool. Maybe I've got to have it on a particular mode. There's a couple of other uh, pots here that I don't know what they do, so let's have a listen. Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, you're right. Thank you. There we go. So we do, we do have a boost on here now. So this is gonna like push the overdrive pedal, basically. And now with it off. Oh, Ian is on. Gotcha. Cool, cool. My uh, screen keeps going off for whatever reason. Let's get rid of that. So that white noise is lovely, huh? That's one hell of a pedal board. Talk about overkill. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a X shop demo board. You know, go in and plug in and try everything that they have, uh, you know, in the range. There was usually a couple of these on the ground. My friend Carl had picked it up for I don't know, like I'm around 800 bucks. I'm not 100% certain what the deal was, but I was there when he bought it, but it was, it was years and years ago. His plan was to kind of just pull it apart and resell all the parts. It's got two $300 power supplies in here. Uh, the board itself is really heavy. So I, I would tip this would weigh somewhere around 20 kilograms. So around 44 pounds, um, fully loaded as it is right now. And it's big, like it probably, you know, if you can, sort of, it should put into context how big this thing is, but like if I'm gonna lay my guitar down, right? It's, uh, you know, it's way bigger than the body of the guitar by, by a mile. So um, you could fit two guitars laying sideways next to each other, sort of cover the whole thing. And this section up here is raised as well. It's actually a really good board in terms of, not so much what's on it, but how it's designed. I like this top, section is actually raised here. I think that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, look, I, I think he's gonna pull the trigger on and actually start pulling this thing apart pretty soon, which is good. But um, yeah, it's a good fun little board. I might actually just buy the steel part off him and then uh, use it for a floor demo sort of stuff and not have all this other crap on here, so. Good deal, just got a bunch of new gear. Yeah, it was pretty cool, it's pretty cool. So what I might do is I'll swap over to the telly because uh, I haven't played the Telecaster for a while. I need to set up. I um, didn't realize how poorly it was playing until I played other guitars in my collection, so. I think I gotta uh, sort out the radius here.
All right, let's try that MXR Berserker into the Green Rhino because it, if it wants to be used as a, as a boost, we can try it like that as well. So... Nasty. That is nasty stuff. Uh, Shane, would I would you upgrade a three hundred dollar Euro Jackson with an original Floyd? Expensive pickups, pots wiring. It just depends, man. If you if you can justify um, spending money on a on a less expensive guitar and it's something you want to keep, then do it. Um, just to weigh up what it's going to cost you to upgrade, and then put that against what you could sell your other guitar for and then get the one that you might want. Maybe, I'm not too sure. Uh, my favorite of many, many guitar gear channels that I've subscribed to, thanks man. You have given us all a merry holiday every day of the year, thanks man. Yeah, so the end of the, the uh, 50 videos in 50 days things coming to a close. Thankfully, I need a break. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a few videos forward of the 50 videos in 50 days. So I've just scheduled them for a couple of days next year, early on in the year. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna take a little bit of time off and, and just go back to my regular upload schedule again after that. So uh, yeah, probably, I don't know, I might take a full week off checking comments and all that as well. It's been a, a crazy, crazy year. I've never worked as hard as I have this year ever like in any job. <laughs> so it's been, it's been insane. Oh, sorry, forgot I was wearing that. Um, yeah, so it's just one of those things where I, I thought I'd give it a go doing as, as many videos as I did and it was, a, it was a good learning experience. I kind of refined my process, which is always good as well. And that's one of those things where every, every time I do something, irrespective of if it's YouTube related or whatever, if I keep doing things over and over, I like a process that is really time efficient. So it taught me a lot more about that. I was already good at what I did in terms of time efficiency, but um, yeah, I, I've worked out a few things that can even speed that up even more. So it's great. So these aren't volume pedals, unfortunately, they're, uh, they're wah pedals. They're two wah pedals. So what I thought we'd do is maybe um, see what happens when we use both because I'm sure that's never been done. <laughs> I'm gonna turn off that boost thing, see how it goes. So, which, uh, which overdrive should I use? Actually, what's this chorus sound like? All right, cool. Um, let's, let's go for the Rhino again, because it's fun. Actually, let's go this distortion one. All right, so one wire. All right, here's the other one. And here's two. You want to get your feet off uh, going on to two like like this. It's kind of hard when you're playing. take off. All right, so that was crazy. I thought I was uh, just messing with, uh, that might be a bit amusing, but anyway, it's kind of crazy. It just gets nasty. Uh, David says, Shane, I learned about your channel fairly recently from the demos you did for Jerry. Uh, 
you have a go-to channel for research and stuff whenever I need. I can't see the rest of that because I've had to, in the thing is with the comments, I've, uh, I've had to enlarge my screen so I can see. The, the setup's really weird, by the way. If you saw what I'm looking at, it's, it's really odd. So my little laptop has the, um, the screen expanded really big so I can read the comments, but I missed the end of the, the lines on some of them. So, uh, The hard work has been very noticeable, mate, both in editing and quality increases. Fantastic. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's probably been a little bit of overkill, but it's been good because I've like mixed up the content as well. Having Rick on has been great. Doing all the Tally, Tally Tuesday sort of videos with him. Um, I did some stuff with Ryan a while back as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's been a good mix of stuff. It, uh, the pedal thing, you know, I think everyone's maybe a little pedaled out when it comes to the market. I could be wrong, but... Um, I've got a few more of those coming up as well. Good stuff as well, which I thought, you know what, this actually sounds like the stuff that I would use live, like the Lunar Stone gear. That man, that stuff's awesome. Leave one wah halfway up and then use the other one. All right, let's give this a go. Should we use the fuzz? Let's use the fuzz. Oh, it's falling down. I might have to use the other one. Hang on. Oh, they're both really loose. It doesn't work. I have to use my foot. Hang on, all right, so I'll use the left one. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Woo, it gets really nasty. I don't know if it's just the setting on this pedal. I cranked up these trim pots as well. So, uh, yeah. I don't think you can go too far wrong with a bog standard wire pedal. I really don't know if you need a whole lot of boosts and stuff on there, but... I'll tell you what though, I like my GCB95F more than I do the bog standard one. Um, Guitar Search Saturday with Pixie in Australia going to happen at some point, hopefully. That would be awesome. Uh, I, I sort of trying to convince him to come down at some point. Uh, and the next video, wherever it'll be shot, in terms of the Guitar Search Saturday, I'll actually have the video camera out. As you might have noticed, the camera work on the last one I did wasn't great. A few people said they felt sick watching it, which I apologize, but when I do those undercover, it's hard to keep the camera steady. Um, no doubt about that. Oh, and that's the other thing too, yeah. Like with the videos I've been doing, um, I had a good chance to try some different amps and and guitars and all that sort of stuff as well. So I've been trying to mix it up and still getting through the Jerry stuff as well. Uh, I've got a couple of, I'm pretty much done with the electric guitar videos. I think I finished the last of his videos just the other day. So I finished, there's maybe two or three more electric guitar videos to go up and the rest will be acoustics. And then, uh, yeah, so I got content coming out that'll be hopefully a little bit different anyway. Have I tried the Kalen Pegasus? It's their take on the Klon. I haven't, I've seen it. Uh, I got sent a link from someone pretty much when it came out and it looked really, really cool. Um, I just haven't had a chance. They haven't offered to send one out. I don't really need any more pedals, <laughs> uh, as you can probably tell. So uh, yeah, I, look, if they send one out, I'll definitely demo it, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to buy another Klon. I've already got two Klons that do the same thing, so, but, Kalen make great stuff, you know, for their price, they can't be beat. Um, do I have any guitars with a Floyd? No. Nah. Pixie, Pixie can rock his cargo shorts in the land down under. Yeah, absolutely. And I can wear the same crap I wear all the time anywhere in the world as well. That's what I've worked out. I always look like... See, the thing with me, and he's probably the same from what I could tell, just hanging out with him for a couple of days, was um, he probably has like 10 black t-shirts so what I tend to do as well is just like buy two pairs of the same jeans or whatever at the same time 
four t-shirts that are exactly the same, like plain t-shirts like this. I got like three of these. So uh, yeah, nice gut. I don't think so. <laughs> Not, uh, I've been working out for a year. It's been a year now, so sometimes my posture doesn't, doesn't, uh, might make me look a little chunky, but I'm not fat. Anyone who's met me will say the exact opposite. This is so easy to play. Oh, change keys. All right, let's do it. Ready? Oh, all right, so we had a few pedals on there. Let's try the full ball metal just because I can't play metal and everyone will hate it. that I don't know how to use that pedal at all plug in the green melon melonish I guess that's this guitar uh, could you throw the blue note on again I don't have that anymore man I, I was literally trying to build my YouTube channel up by buying and selling as much secondhand stuff as I could find so for about two years all I was doing was going to secondhand shops buying everything that I could cheap demoing it and then flipping it and doing that. That's how I ended up building the channel. So for probably the first five years or six years, that's all I did was buy stuff and sell stuff. Uh, so yeah, there were no handouts back then. It was li literally like, I can't hold on to stuff if I want to build the channel. That was pretty much the goal. That pedal though, the blue note, killer. All right. One metal guitar. Nah, I'm not gonna buy a metal guitar, man. I got no reason to buy a metal guitar at all. So uh, I can't play that style. I like um, some metal music, there's no doubt about it. I had two delays going on as well, how about that? Single coil mode with some uh, OD. Woo! All right, I got three pedals I don't want on right now. Here we go. <laughs> it's hard because I got studio lighting right above my head. And looking down, I can't sometimes tell if the lights are on or off. So that's single coil mode. Tell you what, let's see if there's a difference in the tone. So bridge pickup uh, PRS. Actually, we'll do neck because bridge on Italian is kind of weird and unique. So. All right, let's try this. Just to see if there's any difference in the sound. Hey, BB Ninja, how are you, man? Welcome. Wow. So when I say that PRS is very, very clear sounding, that's a Telecaster neck pickup, man. Still 
Still sounds good. Pedal have I got on? The GTOD. We'll go back to this on single coil mode. Hey, Pedro Guitars, how are you, man? Yeah, so this is kind of like the first go round of uh, me trying this whole streaming guitar audio. I'm using my uh, Blues Deluxe into my two notes and then into a sound card. So hopefully it is all good. More lick lesson videos, thanks man. Um, yeah, look, uh, I, these are things I, I need to start working on more. They're, those videos are the videos that take me the longest normally because I'm not used to explaining like what fret I'm on and how to do this and that and all that kind of stuff. So I tend to have to say things 55 times before I make sure I'm on the right fret, on the right string and all that. So I'll do more coming up. Uh, pedal board, put the pedal board to the studio. I can't do that right now, unfortunately. It just won't work. I will at some point. I'm gonna do some demos through the Studio Pros more. So for those, let me, uh, let me just move something here. So for those, oh, actually, I probably didn't even need to do that. Let's move this. I'm seeing my picture kind of backwards, but um, so uh, yeah, I've recently just uploaded the video of this. This is the Studio Pro 112, the red stripe one, and the one over on this side, which is over here and down, is the Silver Stripe one, which I actually prefer, surprisingly. Like, I, I've, I've been a huge fan of the Red Stripe PV Bandit forever, and I still am. I, st I still prefer that one over the Silver Stripe one. It's louder and just, you know, it's got a really great sound. But um, this Studio Pro feels to me like it's as loud as my PV Bandit, the Silver Stripe one. It, it's ridiculously loud. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to swap over to that stuff right now. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, have to reconfigure everything and it's a I don't want to spend 20 minutes messing around with my settings so um, look if anyone's got any questions let's take a few now and we will do that yeah absolutely if you want to hear any particular pedal combinations or whatever what we've got on here then feel free if you want to hear them all on let me know <laughs> we'll see if we can blow up my uh, two note torpedo but we've tried both wire pedals on uh, the Phase 90, actually, I don't know if I, if I clicked that on or not, but it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So, yeah, let me know if you want to hear something in particular. I've got other guitars in my collection as well I can get out, but um, these are the three. I've got the Tele, Les Paul, and the PRSSE, which everyone's probably sick of by now, but I friggin' love it. I played it again the other night. Probably, arguably played the best solo I've ever played in my life. There's some mistakes and stuff in there, but it was... Uh, it was Big, so I might I might upload that at some point. Um, play some Aussie stuff, Midnight Oil. I don't really know any Midnight Oil, man. Uh, I I know a lot of their songs. I got a lot of their albums from back in the day, but uh, yeah, I never really I don't really learn those sort of sort of tunes, man. Sorry. Um, this is your clearest stream ever. Thanks. I'm trying like I've got less less studio lighting on than normal but I've still got the big one on above my head. So I'm going to try and work with this. Let's see how we go. Ring modulator and metal zone. Uh, any other gas since the PRS? Uh, I want another one. <laughs> I could almost see myself getting a second one. That's how much I like that one, the green one. Which side is it on? It's over here. I love it. I think it's awesome. And... Uh, yeah, they got the red one in at the moment. I was like, oh, geez, that's pretty good. What first turned you on to music? Uh, in terms of blues and all that kind of stuff, it have to be the Blues Brothers movie. I remember seeing that when I was five and enjoying it and not really knowing why. And I'd watch that over and over again. And that's how I think that kind of uh, sunk into my head. I liked music before that, like my brother had a lot of good music when I was a kid. Um, but the Blues Brothers was probably the first movie where I heard music like that. And 
went, wow, this is cool. And those, the guys were cool. You know, all the guys in there were awesome. Need help deciding between a Boss Katana 100 and a Fender Blues Junior 3. Which one should I get? <laughs> uh, just depends on what you need, man. Like, two completely different amps. Two completely different volumes. Boss Katana 100 is going to be way louder. The bigger box makes it sound way bigger. Blues Junior 3 is a great pedal platform amp. It's not too loud. Um, it, but it's too loud for playing at home. So, uh, if you don't like fiddling around with computers and all that kind of stuff, get the Blues Junior. Maybe consider the PRS 245 SE. It has the fat neck. That's from Mario. I don't know why I blocked that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if they've got the fat neck uh, PRS SEs in lefties. I think they've just got this one style. Oh, where is it? This one style. So that's all we get, and that's fine. The thing is, because the neck's kind of wide this way, it feels good in the hand, it really does. It's actually a whole lot easier to play than both of these guitars, that's why I'm playing it a lot at the moment. Uh, do I prefer the SE over the American-made guitars? I, in terms of the ones I've played, I've played one that I like a lot, and one that I didn't think much of at all. I like the sound of these pickups because they're very bright and clear. Uh, and I did a shootout video between them as well. Not that I think the bridge pickup on the American ones are slightly bigger sounding, but it's nothing that you can't make up for in terms of um, oops, in terms of um, just volume or EQ or whatever. So, uh, who inspired me to start creating content? Uh, you know what? Nobody, <laughs> because back in two thousand six, I literally thought to myself. I wanted to buy a Behringer Overdrive pedal and I thought to myself, there's no videos on YouTube of this thing at that particular time. So I went and bought one and made a video. That's how that worked. In terms of who inspires me to make content today, it's basically channels that aren't in the guitar niche. Like I look at a lot of other really enjoyable YouTube channels and they're kind of like the things that I, I take more away from non-guitar channels than I do from guitar channels these days. Not to say my, uh, my content couldn't be improved because it absolutely can. Um, I would say Pixie probably inspired me to do what I'm doing now, like just trying this out and seeing how that works. Um, but I, I've always tried to do stuff that was different. Like I think I was one of the first doing podcasts. I was definitely one of the first, out of all the guys that you know of on YouTube, I had the first pedal demos up, like before Gear Man Dude and all those guys. So if you go back to the start of our channels, I actually had one before that, which was a Seymour Duncan pickup booster. It was late 2006, but I took it down because the video was so crap. It was so bad. But um, I think Pro Guitar Shop sort of um, was somewhat of a influence on streamlining your videos. They go into details about specs and all that. I don't tend to do a whole lot of that stuff. If you want to find out the the specs, then you, it's easy to find that stuff. But for me, I think it, um, I took things from everybody's channels in terms of like even outside the gear niche, like the podcast started because I listened to podcasts in a completely irrelevant, uh, you know, niche as well. So yeah, it was just stuff that I thought, you know what, let's just try this and see if it works. Um, but back in the early days, you go back to the start of my channel, uh, the videos were going up early very very early and they weren't like with any intention other than like just here you go there's no videos on this on on youtube or anywhere in the world here's a video and then i thought oh geez i've got an audience for this and i just kept doing them you know every month or week or whatever uh, i don't geek but i i'll Still get the Katana, it's so cheap. Yeah, it is cheap. Yeah, price, is, price is a thing too. I mean, you can get a good sound out of the Katana. The only downside of those amps is you have to really hook them up to a computer to modify them. Um, and that, if you want to change all the built-in effects and all that kind of stuff. So you're sort of trading that for functionality to some extent. But if you're just using it as a clean amp or a dirty amp with pedals, it's going to be great. It's a really cool amp. So what I plan on doing next year, I want to get, uh, next year, like next week, a couple of weeks later, I'm going to get the Katana head, the, uh, I'm going to get another Mustang GT, we're going to get the uh, Marshall Code, 
and something else that I'm forgetting. I'm going to see what we can get. I haven't tried a Marshall code at all, so I think that's going to be an interesting experience. Let's go back to this guitar. I like this one. So Quicksilver says he plays with headphones on exclusively. If that's your intended use, get the Katana instead of the, the Katana 50 instead of the 100. Well, there we go. That's some good, good um, information. This guitar does play easier. And that's the thing that, um, you know, when I first borrowed it, I thought, I don't know where my pick's gone. I'm, I'm good at doing that. Oh, here it is. Um, when I first borrowed this guitar, I thought to myself, oh, it looks cool, but I bet you it doesn't play that well. Or I bet you it doesn't sound that good. <laughs> I'm going to be disappointed with it. And then I, I played it and I went, wow. And Rick was here when, we, when I had this. And we plugged it up against that. And it was, there, were, there was no comparison in the tone, like clarity wise, all that kind of stuff. Different, in, obviously they're gonna be a different sound, which is fine, that's what you want. But um, you know, people who think like, these are gonna do what a Les Paul does or do, does what a Strat does, it's, they just do something very, very different. I don't buy guitars without fat necks, um, but this is kind of like the exception to the rule where it's slightly wider and flatter, so it feels big in the hand anyway. It's uh, pretty nice. plays itself the tone sounds better and on this guitar thanks man i think what it is is it it's just a clearer sounding guitar like you take neck pick up again it's got all the sting on those high end notes then you contrast that to the um uh, the uh, Les Paul style guitar. I'm not going to call it a Les Paul. People will whinge that it's, well, it's not a real one. So neck pickup. So yeah, it's it's got more of a rolled out high end, which you'd expect. And then you even pick up a tally. And then you think, oh, this is just going to be way toppier, which it kind of is to some extent. So that's with a GTOD on, still. And then you, same settings, all that stuff. And this is humbucker mode, by the way, too. When you go back to this. That sting on those notes is just unlike any of my other guitars. My little crow Corvino with the mini humbucker neck kind of approximates that sort of sound, but not, not like this. So that's the thing that sold me on it. I was like, wow, this is clear even with dirt. You know, I can stack up a couple of overdrives and whatever. got sting. <laughs> Questions and great guitar playing is a great, oh thanks man. I'm really tired this morning actually. I'm, it's early. I probably should schedule these an hour later than I am now. I sometimes don't play. I usually don't start filming until about 11 a.m. because I feel like if I start before that either I'm too husky like I, <laughs> I am now or my uh, my fingers don't always move, move right but uh, I think I'll, I'll try this a few more times coming up and I'll get the lighting 
sorted. I'll watch it back and make sure that the sound and all that's good too. If I can make any improvements, I will. But no one's compl complained about the, the audio, which is good. So uh, hopefully it's been good. Uh, it's almost P90-ish without the hum, exactly. So it's got all the bite of single coil without any, without any hum. Uh, if you've got lots of gain, it might hum just a hair, but realistically it, it doesn't. Um, and then you've got that single coil mode, which is just like super spanky as well. <laughs> my go-to at the moment I go through phases with um with guitars like oh, I'll play this to death and then all of a sudden I'm like I want to play the Les Paul or whatever else so I do go through phases like that but I think this the thing I like about this over my Les Paul is the weight of it, uh, it and the way that it plays but I'm really enjoying using those extra frets like we were playing in G the other night I'm going to upload that guitar solo, I think. It, it's not so bad, but... Um, so... We were like... It was one of those stupid solos where you play way too much and you go for way too long, but... Yeah, I was... Just getting up to, you know, you can really start to bend these notes really crazy. Because <laughs> yeah. you got the high E too, right? So you can maybe even bend to the G. Almost. So I'm sort of getting used to playing... Um, further up the guitar again, which is something I haven't done for, I don't usually play that much up here. And these frets kind of, they're not too bad, you know? I'm just running some scales, but. Something to be said about these pickups. I, I think they, they hit a home run with it. So anyway. Uh, it's not morning. <laughs> yeah, maybe not where you live. But <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> oh man, I'm a husky. It sucks. Got to go, mate. Have a crack in your year. Thanks, man. You too. Appreciate your support. And yeah, see you in the new year. Uh, what I thought I was going to do, possibly, and this is just a possibility at the moment, was I'm going to try maybe streaming my uh, New Year's Eve gig with Rick and Brian and all those guys. If they're cool with it, I might do it. Otherwise, what I'll do, I'll just film it and edit up some clips later. Uh, what do I think about the Epiphone Sheraton? 80% uh, great, uh, and that's just relating to that entire range. 20% uh, of the guitars I've played that are Epiphone Sheratons or seen don't sound great. 80% of them sound awesome. Um, make sure when you play them that they've just got enough top end. That's my suggestion. They're beautiful guitars. Overall, most of them that I've seen and played uh, have been great. The Korean ones are, I think, the ones that most people go for, but the Chinese ones or Indonesian ones are probably fine too. But just double check. I've heard a few, I've seen a few get traded around that have no tops uh, through friend circles and that. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like the sound of that at all. Just a really muddy, dark sort of sound. Make sure you get, you know, get onto the neck pickup of a 335 and see if it does that. See if it get, gives you that, you know, that sort of top end snap. That's what you want from a 335. So even the Sheratons and all that, they're, they're great guitars. Hey Shane, which humbuckers do you recommend for an AM Pro Strat for grunge? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, 
these are all sort of subjective questions as well. Like you can kind of, I don't really play grunge for starters, but my suggestion would be find out who you like to listen to and find out what they kind of use. Uh, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking like active pickups or hotter pickups are the way to go for heavier music, but what you end up doing anytime you buy hotter pickups in any guitar, you're basically going to be losing clarity. So it's not always the case, but it is most of the time. So maybe you can get away with PAFs, you can get away with any of those sort of, you know, look at look at what they put in the Gibson uh, classic Les Pauls. Great sounding pickups. They'll work for just about anything. You don't need super hot pickups to play even heavy music. Um, what's your favorite artist? Can you play something from him or her? Uh, yeah, I can, but the thing is, I've been struck with a copyright infringement before for playing uh, Hendrix stuff, so I, that's why I don't really do much of the cover stuff. I just write up, come up with more of my own backing tracks and and do that. I hinted at a couple of songs just before, but um, yeah, it's one of those things, you've got to be really careful with it, uh, especially when you're a bigger channel. Uh, I've just, I've had problems with it before. Rick's Telecaster collection's awesome. Yeah, man, that's from Pedro. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, his collection kicks ass. He was talking about maybe pulling the trigger on another one. We actually filmed one more video with, uh, there's two more videos. One's on its way next Tuesday, and the other one that I had, we were using these uh, wireless, well, not these wireless packs, but the batteries ran out on another wireless pack, so I unfortunately couldn't use that video, but um, yeah. You got, you've really got to be careful on YouTube. The bigger you get, the easier it is to be hit by copyright from LLCs and all that kind of stuff. It's happened to me before. I had a six month uh, issue on my channel. So yeah, I, I don't want to do that again. That's why I tend to play a lot of similar stuff. They're all my songs, most of the, the things you hear me play. Um, yeah, I, I play a lot more of my, my own stuff and just improv blues and, and whatever else uh, because of that reason more than anything else. I know a lot of people don't really care about any of that but even big channels that you've seen have been hit with it as well so just yeah just, if you do youtube just be careful of that stuff um my vote is for the new year's eve for a live stream all right cool i'll see what i can do i, I have a, a way of doing this where i think it's going to sound pretty good as well and that's that's the challenge sometimes is to get the audio to be good so i, I think i've got a good way of um, making that work i think ryan's going to come up as well He's, you know, phenomenal guitar player. We've got a couple of good drummer friends of mine coming up and we're going to swap between bass on a couple of the sets and all that as well. So, uh, Zaidi, uh, is it Zaidi? Sorry. It says, ever tried Serotone amps? I have. I've tried their, uh, what was it called? The Overdrive Special, I think, or something like that. It's like a Dumble-ish copy. It's all right. I've, I don't think it was mind-blowing at all, but it was, it was all right. I've tried their Tweed amps, which were all right as well. I don't think they're quite as good as what they're trying to copy. And if you're thinking you're gonna get like a, a overdrive special um, serotone, it's gonna do what a tumble does, it doesn't do that at all. They're good, they're good amps, but they're not what I would consider mind-blowing. I'd rather just go buy you know, a Fender or a Marshall or something. Ever heard of a tele pickup that fits in a fits in a humbucker sized hole? I mean, yeah, I mean tellies, plenty of tellies have humbuckers, but if you're talking about, I'm not too sure what your question is. Do you mean like a single coil sized pickup that fits in a humbucker sized hole? Then um, you'd have to get a bracket, or maybe you'd have to also basically change the pick the pick scratch plate basically to fit it. I guess UMC is crazy about hitting videos for copyright. Oh, absolutely. You know, like a while back, I did a, a lesson on an intro lick and it was inspired by a John Mayer song. They're, he's the he's the worst. Like John Mayer's LLC men or whatever they're called. They're, they're like Nazis. It's like he owned the copyright to a lick that he played that he copied off 20 other guys. So there's this huge problem where you can't, you can appeal it, but it's just a waste of time. It really is. You're just better off deleting the video. 
So I don't want to have any of those troubles. And you'll probably find like in the next few years or year and a half, two years or something, this is my prediction that a lot of people that are playing cover music are going to get hit with it and it's going to affect them big time. Um, but anyway. Do I play slide guitar? Oh yeah, let's do it. Where's my slide? I got a steel one and a glass one. This will blow your mind, man. Move over uh, your favorite slide player. You're about to be shamed. And it's not gonna be pretty. So my, my uh, slide playing isn't anything to uh, email home about. And I wouldn't say I can even play. So this is just gonna be embarrassing. This might get my help get my act together to learn to play some. <laughs> Sounds terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm very, very simple at it at the moment. It's one thing that I want to actually spend some time on at some point because some of my songs would sound better with a slide and Brian usually takes care of that so I've never really had to learn it. But what I normally do, if I'm layering up um, you've heard some intro clips that I, I, you know, when I talk on some of the videos I make, what I do, I tend to, to chuck on a whole lot of delay and I'll do simple stuff, um, with a, with a slide. So it's just very, very simple stuff. Is this on? Oh, sorry. So I'm just sort of doing stuff like that that um, kind of just makes for non-intrusive background music, basically. So this is kind of how I make the little talking clips. I just chuck on delays and all kinds of stuff. I usually play clean, but uh, you're not going to hear that too well the way it's set up right now. But uh, yeah, I don't really play much slide, no. I, I kind of get the principle of it, but I, I just, I'm not confident with it at all. The thing with slide that most people don't realize is like when you play um, finger style, you're sort of like between the fret, but when you play with a uh, slide, you're actually on the fret. so. It, it takes a little while to get used to that, and I'm still not used to it. It's definitely a, a cool, a cool thing to know. But then you got all this stuff you can do where you like mute the um, the strings behind it with your other fingers. That's the way my friend plays, and it sounds great. slide for those who haven't played it before you got to be really really precise now if you're playing finger style you can kind of be anywhere in the fret to make it sound right you've actually going to play right on the fret otherwise otherwise you're out so pitch is basically where the fret is and nowhere else that I can recall on a slide. I'm just, I just fiddle around with them. But, uh, you know, I, this is what I'm using right now, one of these uh, glass ones. It's a Dunlop, I think. Yeah, anyway, this is my second one. The first one fell on the ground, I didn't see it, and I stood on it, and it's safety glass, and it broke into about three billion little pieces. Uh, don't most sliders use open tuning? No. You think that would be the case, but they don't. Uh, I know, Two of my good friends, Brian and Dom, 
Don's a phenomenal slide player as well. This other guy, he plays with a slide on his little, like a micro piece of steel. He never retunes his guitar and he, he absolutely kills it. Um, so yeah. Don't mean open tuning right now, but it seems easy to play slide. Yeah, open tuning is easier because you don't need to know where the notes are. It's all like straight up and down basically, um, which makes it easier, but you're locked. I think you're more locked into that, that particular key. Um, most people that play lead guitar can translate that to slide if they know the technique. Uh, my technique sucks, <laughs> but uh, that's one thing I already know where the notes are. So I need to work on getting the feel of the slide down and just being basically saying to myself, hang on a sec guys. <coughs> Jeez, sorry guys. Um, throat's irritating me today. Um, I need to say to myself, I'm gonna suck at this for months or a couple of months. So just make as many mistakes as you can and be happy with it and, and get, you know, get going with it and get better at it because that's what will happen. I just find myself doing other stuff in, instead of doing that. So maybe this, this will be the year. Give me 12 months. So this time next year. <laughs> Hot Rod Deluxe drive channel isn't all that great. Uh, clean with pedals. Yeah, I totally agree. What gauge strings are on the PRS? That's from Ed. I've got um, a 10s to 46s, I think, on that guitar. Everything else has got 11s to 48s, 49s, 11 to 49s. Uh, I'm looking over here because I've got some strings. So I get whatever I can cheap. These were cheap online, so I picked them up. That's what I got here, 11 to 49s. Same with these ones as well. These are 11 to 48s. It really doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, these were cheap in a three by three or whatever, so I got that. Um, but the PRS I'm gonna leave with the tens. Uh, it just feels good. It feels really good, and I'm happy with that. Where am I playing on New Year's Eve? So I'm gonna be up at um, Mount Dandenong Hotel in Alinda here in Melbourne, Australia. Just doing a bit of a, it's like a jam gig, basically. I've invited some friends up, make some noise, and it should be fun. What, uh, sorry, that's an awesome looking taco. Thanks, man. Yeah, I got this in the 335, which I haven't had out of the cupboard in months. <laughs> it needs to come out again. The 335 is such a great guitar. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just don't play it much, which is a real shame. I think what happened was I saw this guy here who plays the 335 play a Les Paul. I saw him in person play a Les Paul and it was like, it was mind blowing. So I've just, you know, I tend to pick this now. That's the phase thing that I go through. Uh, check out Samantha Fish, she's great on slide. Okay, cool. Yeah, 10s are easy. If you play, I've played 11s, I used to play, I've played 12s with a wound G for a while on a 335, but I don't do that anymore. Um, but yeah, 10s feel extremely easy to play. Like after playing 11s for so long, that, that guitar has no fight almost, the PRS. It's really, it's really that easy to play. Yeah, I, I think, you know what I might do? I might start pulling back. Once I get through these sets of strings, or, I'll, or maybe I'll just start putting tens on the tally as well and see how I feel about that. I've tried that before and I liked it. Um, I just think, I don't know, tens are just easier. They really are. Hey, thanks again for the Cerebus Overdrive, Steve. Hey, thanks, Steve. No worries, man. I'm glad you like it. Awesome stuff. Uh, yeah, it's a cool pedal. Actually, I had someone else contact me about that the other day, so uh, you were you were lucky. I need to reply to them. You just reminded me. Uh, I always use 10s, but because of arthritis, I've been playing 9s. Well, fair enough. I mean, look, if I had problems with my hands or, or, or issues like that, I, I would play whatever's the easiest. No doubt about it. I'm just so used to playing um, 11s now that it kind of just feels, I like the fight in the strings. Like it really, you gotta really wanna bend the strings to get anything to happen. Um, I like that for quite some time, but I don't know, something about just having it. I can play a lot. I don't play fast, I can't play quick. There's a lot of guys that will blitz me as 10 year olds. But um, yeah, I can, I find myself 
being more fluid on a guitar with lighter strings. style stuff is messed right up. Uh, Alright, cool. So, I reckon what we do, we might crank them all on and see what happens. What do you reckon? Should we do that? I am losing my mind and I'm losing my picks. Here it is. Here it is. Let's, uh, well, we'll turn them all on. I don't think we need the full ball metal on. I reckon that might just be a little bit of uh, unnecessary action. So, uh, Oh, Derek Trucks, man. Yeah, I've seen him play live. He's, uh, he's, he is, he's something else. One of the best. He's actually a great fingerstyle player as well. Yeah, like uh, without the slide, I'm saying. He's, uh, yeah, he's a dude. All right, so what we'll do, let's, let's turn everything on, see what happens. I might have to adjust the input on my sound card because the overall volume is going to get ridiculous. But we'll see how we go. So we'll start with... We'll go this way, this way, and then this way, because that's the way the board's set up. GTOD. Might just back the gain off. off on this one as well. This is the Berserker. That's a stupid thing I'm playing. Seventy-eight distortion coming up. Let's just back this off. All right, let's start again. I'll start with some chords. Here we go. Check some delay on. Stock pickups, I mean, just whatever came with it. Got the uh, Aquapus as well. I should have moved the uh, pedal camera closer. Oh, you can't see the pedal board. Oh, I didn't have the pedal board video camera on. Oh, sorry guys. Should we do it again? Let's do it again. See if we blow everybody's ears. <laughs> ears out. So that's the clean tone, believe it or not. Sort of forgot what clean tone was like. 
Sorry about that, I forgot I turned that off before. Gotta check my clipping, make sure it... Lastly, just because we can, <laughs> let's try the middle pedal and we'll give it some heavy delay just because that's what we do. We'll chuck them both on. See how crazy this gets. Already sounds like it wants to take off. That'll do. <laughs> I don't know what, what's going on. Let's put this away. Yeah. All right, well that was uh, Petal, uh, Petal Star Galactica, we call this thing. It's an absolute monster. It's one of those things where, unless you pick it up, you don't realize how ridiculously heavy it is. Um, I love way huge pedals, green rock, Rhino and Swollen Pickle look. Yeah, they're both good pedals, man. I'm actually really surprised how great the Green Rhino is. I haven't used it for uh, a long time. And that's this one. And uh, yeah, it actually sounds really good. I think what put me off it originally was the fact it had these two extra trim pots for shaping the EQ. But actually, that's a really cool thing on this particular pedal. So, um, 78 Distortion was fun. I gotta say, that was actually pretty cool. There's something about distortion versus two overdrives, you know, like what a distortion does, you can't get that from two overdrives. They're very, very different in terms of voicing. So, uh, yeah. Why no pork loin? Uh, yeah, I know. That's just, a, you know, it's whatever the board was uh, shipped out of the distributor's uh, factory with. What's your go-to reverb pedal? Look, I don't need reverb pedals, but my favorite one, believe it or not, is the Boss FRV1. It's awesome. It's a boss and fender pedal. Uh, if you turn the tone all the way to the left, it sounds like a, um, a deluxe reverb. If you turn it all the way to, or anywhere other than that, it will sound like a really great spring reverb. I just can't get into compression pedals. I took my Keeley compressor back to the store. Yeah, I don't know about... A lot of people rave about Keeley stuff. I'm yet to play some... Keely stuff that really blows me away. Um, I have to say he makes bad stuff. I'm just yet to really go, oh wow, geez, I couldn't live without that. I, I, I just, I haven't heard any of his stuff. The best compressor pedal I've ever used it is not a cheap one, but it's definitely good. Um, I put a video up, it's called the Cali 76. Um, check that out, that, that's a beast. But you might not even need a compressor in the type of music you're playing, or you know, you might just not need one. So, um, you should do a mini amp shootout comparing models like the Joyo Atomic um, Vox. Yeah, I used to have a few of those Joyo amps. I've demoed some of them, but I never did a shootout. Uh, I actually sold them off. Um, basically, for me to get by, a lot of the stuff I get, I have to resell. So that's that's kind of how I, I operate the channel. On the, on the most part, anyway. I, I do keep some stuff, but most of it goes. Uh, and that stuff, you can't really find in shops here, the little mini amps. Um, but I'll see what I can do. There's definitely a few other mini amps I can get my hands on, so I'll see what I can do. Uh, Lewis needs to be there. Yeah, it's fun chatting to him, man. I'll definitely do a, a couple of live streams with him and um, Steve coming up, Pixie Licks. Hey Shane, what's the best tone between Katana Mini and the Micro Cube GX? Uh, I, I think the Micro Cube GX is that one with like four really small speakers in it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I haven't used it 
all I know is the Katana Mini sounds pretty good. It's not loud. It's as loud as your talking voice. Uh, but the tone you get out of it's actually really good. I, I, I really enjoyed using it. Um, and for the price, it's pretty good. I'd be more probably leaning towards that than the Micro Cube. But, you know, I, it comes down to experience. And I, I haven't used the Micro Cube, so... JHS and Wampler get a little overrated as well. I just think like like that new pedal that um, Brian's made, not to belittle him or anything, but that the Klon basically copy with the EQ pedal control. It's been done to death already. It's not doing really anything new. And, and that's not a shot at him. It's just maybe he hasn't seen the other pedals that are already that are already out do that. But there's just some stuff out. He makes some really some of my favorite pedals are his, but then. I find a lot of them way too overcomplicated. There's just too many toggle switches, and some people really dig that sort of stuff. But if it doesn't sound good with three controls, don't buy it. <laughs> That's the way that I, I, I like to work. The less stuff that we have um, to fiddle with, the, the more you can focus on playing, I guess. Compression seems to take away things from, the, from about the amp tone. Yeah, maybe. It depends on the compressor and how hard you run it and all that kind of stuff. The idea of a compressor is to essentially make sh it evens your pick attack. So the way you want to hear it is you can pick soft or, or it will bring up the, the strings that might get lost in the mix. It will bring them, it'll make all the notes pretty much even. I wouldn't use a compressor to do solos with unless you want it for more sustain, but I think most of the the time I would use a compressor is just for doing rhythm stuff on a cleaner sound. I wouldn't really use it for much else, but it's all subjective stuff. Sorry, my screen's just gone off here. This was fun. Have you seen Pixie lately? I talk to him every, I don't know, week or so online, so uh, yeah. I've got to get a live stream definitely happening with him coming up. Uh, Wampler stuff's great, but expensive. Yeah, you know, I guess when you make stuff, uh, Australian-made pedals are expensive, so I don't think he's priced himself out of the market. A lot of the stuff that he makes is really good, right? Don't take that the wrong way, but there's a lot of stuff that I just find unnecessary in some pedals, uh, and it doesn't matter what the brand is. You could, even these ones. Like, all of this crap on the side of this wire, for me, unnecessary. I don't mind the voicing control, but um, the boost and all that, do you really need it on a wire pedal? Maybe some people's answer would be yes, but simple is usually good. If, I, if I, my friend said to me, oh, I can have one or the other of these two, which one do you want? I'll take this. I'll take the bog standard one. Uh, is there a way to make the micro terrors have more clean headroom? No. Yeah, you gotta get a different amp, basically, for that to happen. So. Oh guys, it's getting kind of warm and I'm gonna go for a swim. How about that? People were whinging that I looked way too white. <laughs> that I needed to go outside more and I couldn't agree more. Woo! How about that? I don't need to do anything. Oh, this is cool. How about some DJ white noise before I go? Let's, um, I haven't done that for a while. For those who have no idea what the context that is, I did this, I had these noisy pedals from a company called Oral Dream a while back. And they were just terrible garbage pedals. And uh, they wanted me to demo it. And I said, nah, I'm not gonna demo them. They're no good. And, oh, well, some of them were all right actually, but then there were others that weren't. And I didn't want to get stuck putting up crappy pedals on my channel. So, all right, hopefully we can see this all right. Let me know if that looks all right. I know I'm out of shot. It's probably for the best. Um, so what we're gonna do now, we haven't done this for a while. I'm gonna get down on the floor. We're gonna do some uh, DJ white noise. We'll see if we can get something happening here. Cause that's pretty noisy straight away as soon as I click this pedal on. Let's see what we can do here. Might mean I need to, uh... oh, really? <laughs> nah, it's not gonna work. These pedals are too good. Damn it. 
And I should break out the oral dream ones again and do it with that. All right, guys. Well, take care. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. Um, feel free to give the stream the thumbs up. I know the stream was kind of random and weird today. This was kind of like a test of just making sure everything works as well. I did a quick test yesterday, but this was the official first go at this. So, uh, yeah, hopefully it was all right. Uh, take a look at Tone City, Joyo, and Amon, Amun. Yeah, they're all liquid pedals. Nothing wrong with those guys. So, uh, yeah. I'm just saying that some of the ones I've, uh, I've tested from certain companies were great, and then other ones they've made were junk. So, uh, yeah. What do I think of Marshall for Blues? I haven't heard one that I thought went, I went wow uh, for Blues. They're more of a heavier sort of, you know, rock amp, in my opinion. If you're playing Blues rock, you might be able to get away with it, but... Um. All right, guys, rock on. Thanks for hanging out, and uh, yeah, we'll do... Another live stream, probably in the new year. I might try and stream the New Year's gig as well, just for something different. Um, and yeah, I don't know if I'll leave that up, but it'll be, I might just stream it if I can. The reception up there is not great, but we'll see how we go. I should be should be able to work that out, so. All right, guys, well, that's been uh, Pedal Star Galactica. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, I'll be in touch. Have a happy and safe New Year's if I don't speak to you all before that. I still have a few more videos coming up before the end of the year. So uh, hang out for those as well. I'll check those out, I should say, uh, when they go up. I've got a, a couple of interesting things that I think hopefully people that watch the channel will like. So you know, guys, rock on. Thanks again. Thanks to everyone for hanging out. It's been an awesome stream. And oh, well, at least hanging out with you guys, I mean, not from me doing this.